Hi, my name is Josh Gold, and I'm going to be talking about the case Flast v. Cohen. In this case, taxpayers challenged the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965 on the ground that it used federal funds to finance instruction and the purchase of educational materials for use in religious and sectarian schools in violation of the Establishment and Free Exercise Clause. Florence Flast and other taxpayers brought this suit against Wilbur Cohen, Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare. If we remember, in Frothingham v. Mellon, the court ruled that a federal taxpayer is without standing to challenge the constitutionality of a federal statute. The ruling stood as an impenetrable barrier for 45 years against acts of Congress brought by individuals who can assert only the interest of federal taxpayers. The aspect of judicial review highlighted by this case is whether Frothingham barriers should be lowered when a taxpayer attacks a federal statute on the ground that it violates the Establishment and Free Exercise Clause of the First Amendment. The confusion has developed as commentators have tried to determine whether Frothingham establishes a constitutional bar to taxpayer suits or whether the court was simply imposing a rule of self-restraint which was not constitutionally compelled. Appellants, however, insist that Frothingham expressed no more than a policy of judicial self-restraint which can be disregarded when compelling reasons for assuming jurisdiction over a taxpayer suit exists. The case had an important impact on the country because prior to this case, the court held that federal taxpayers had no standing with which to challenge a federal, statu federal statute. Justice Warren created a two-part taxpayer standing test. First, the taxpayer must establish a logical link between his status as a federal taxpayer and the type of legislative enactment being attacked. Second, he must establish the nexus between his status and the exact nature of the alleged constitutional infringement. Furthermore, this case demonstrated judicial activism because granting federal taxpayers status standing to challenge the constitutionality of a federal statute seriously harms the separation of powers doctrine. The outcome of the case was the appellant satisfied both nexuses to support their claim of standing. Mr. Justice Douglas concurred with the opinion of the court, but did not think that the test it lays down is a durable one. Mr. Justice Stewart joined the judgment and opinion of the court and stated that he understood that a federal taxpayer has standing to assert that a specific expenditure of federal funds violates the establishment of the First Amendment, the establishment clause of the First Amendment. Mr. Justice Fortas, Fortas concurred with the opinion of the court, but stated that he would confine the ruling in this case to the proposition that a taxpayer may, may maintain a suit to challenge the validity of a federal expenditure on the ground that the expenditure violates the Establishment Clause. Mr. Justice Harlan dissented and stated that he stands with Frothingham v. Mellon. I agree with the court's decision to lower the barrier in this case when the federal taxpayer satisfies both nexuses to support their claim. In this case, the taxpayer is identifying a specific criterion of which they're challenging. As citizens of the United States and part of the public body that elects our officials to Congress, we should be able to challenge expenditures made that we feel violate our specific constitutional rights. In my opinion, it is not, a fact, it is not the fact that the monies were being spent, but it was the purpose for which how they were being spent. And that is my video on Flast versus Cohen. Thank you.